the Ordo Theoreticus is an Ordo Minoris of the Inquisition. Despite their relatively small size within the Inquisition, it has perhaps one of the most broadly defined mandates of any branch of the Inquisition, seeking answers to the unsolved mysteries of the galaxy. Despite being so small that almost the entire Ordo can be housed in a single escort ship, their vast network of contacts and informants gives them at least some level of influence throughout the entirety of the Imperium and beyond. The Ordo is dedicated to uncovering every unsolved mystery in the galaxy. Whether it's something as grand as the nature of the warp, or as specific as whether it was a guardsman or a custodius that Horus slew while fighting the Emperor, the Ordo Theoreticus seeks answers at all costs, no matter how dangerous the question may be. In a galaxy with constant incursions from a realm of literal unreality, where the details of the past are obscured by thousands of years of informational entropy and propaganda, and where witnesses to uncomfortable truths are regularly executed on the spot, this is a daunting task, to say the least. Complicating this further is the fact that just about every other branch of the Inquisition is actively trying to suppress the very knowledge the Ordo Theoreticus is seeking. The Ordo Hereticus in particular tends to be the most common obstacle, often in the form of Lord Inquisitor Remless's former companion, Inquisitor Volpar. Despite this, and despite their willingness to exploit the many heretical secrets they have uncovered, the Ordo Theoreticus is every bit as devoted to the Emperor and the Imperium as any other branch of the Inquisition, regardless of the suspicions of their peers. While investigating a matter for the Ordo Hereticus on the Forge world of Vos Prime, Lord Inquisitor Darrow found a relatively young magus of the Adeptus Mechanicus named Remlays, delivering a quote-unquote sermon that primarily consisted of what was regarded as little more than crackpot conspiracy theories. While his interrogator, Volpar, thought he was nothing more than a blasphemer and a madman, Darrow found his unconventional thinking impressive and recruited him as an acolyte, along with his Vorax Automata, designation M4U, 13 Romanus. Five years later, the trio found themselves on the world of Cutis Prime, where they discovered the cult of the Nine Silver Eyes, a chaos cult dedicated to Zinch. The cult managed to capture Lord Inquisitor Darrow and began enacting a ritual that would summon nine greater demons of Zinch into real space to bring untold devastation to the material realm. It was only by the combined efforts of Remlays and Volpa that Darrow was saved, the ritual was stopped and the cultists were wiped out. In recognition of their skill and ingenuity, and with a healthy dose of gratitude, Darrow used his authority to promote both his acolytes to fully-fledged inquisitors. While Volpa went to join the Order Hereticus in her master's footsteps, Remlays had far grander ambitions. He travelled to the Inquisition's fortress on Terra itself and petitioned to found a new order, one that would seek out answers to the innumerable unsolved mysteries of the galaxy. Whether it was out of genuine agreement, or simply a desire to keep the insatiably curious young Inquisitor occupied with a seemingly insurmountable task is unknown, but in either case, his request was granted. Remlays would become the founder of the Order Theoreticus, which in turn also resulted in him attaining the rank of Lord Inquisitor. It is often said that genius and madness are two sides of the same coin, which side of it Lord Inquisitor Remles is on largely depends on who you ask. As both the Order Theoreticus creator and its only current Lord Inquisitor, Remles wields virtually unchecked authority over the Ordo's actions. Fortunately for the Ordo, his voracious appetite for knowledge keeps him far too busy to abuse this power over his subordinates. Despite the level of respect he holds within the Ordo, other elements throughout the Inquisition will often treat him with suspicion or confusion at best, or outright hostility at worst. However, these suspicions appear to be largely unfounded. What appears from the outside to be recklessness on his part is merely his more thorough understanding of how the galaxy works and how far the boundaries truly can be pushed safely. At least most of the time. Several years later, when the world of Busa attempted to secede from the Imperium, an unsanctioned psyker named Narina would lead the Loyalist forces in a guerrilla campaign against the rebellious planetary government. 
while her band of loyalists were few in number and relatively ill-equipped. Nerina's untrained, yet powerful telepathic abilities allowed her underground resistance an overwhelming advantage in coordination and military intelligence. <laughs> oh, Remlis, you flatter me. Thanks to her efforts, the Sons of the Night Space Marine chapter faced virtually no resistance when they arrived to restore Imperial control. While the Astartes were forced by Imperial law to take Nerina into custody as a witch, her laudable actions during the rebellion were enough to convince them to turn her in to the nearest Inquisition representative rather than immediately execute her. Yeah, much obliged for that. In a stroke of luck, the nearest Inquisitor just happened to be Lord Inquisitor Ramblaze, who had arrived on Busa to acquire rare artifacts. Impressed by Narina's knowledge, resourcefulness and psychic talents, he agreed to take her under his wing as his personal acolyte. By his inquisitorial authority, Narina is now officially a sanctioned psyker on paper, though the Order of Theoreticus as a whole has gone to great lengths to ensure that said paper is only seen by those who absolutely must know of her abilities. Unfortunately, this secrecy surrounding her psychic powers would have a number of unforeseen consequences in the future. Although Narina was now a legally sanctioned psyker, upon being brought into the Ordo, both she and Remlis wished to keep her telepathic abilities a secret as much as possible. While this arrangement comes with significant advantages, it made things much more difficult when trying to arrange for the psychic training Narina had spent her entire life lacking. Eventually, the two would be granted a set of data regarding the Order of the Coming Dawn, a sororitas order that specializes in housing and training psychers. This would give Remblaze the idea of having Narina visit the convent under the pretext of providing inquisitorial oversight to covertly observe their lessons and apply them to her own personal training. This plan to develop Narina's mastery of telepathy proved far more effective than either of them had planned. However, once, one of the psychic students fell victim to an army of Netherborn attempting to use his mind as a gateway into the material realm. In an attempt to buy themselves time to manifest, several of the Lords of Change leading the attack, suspected although not confirmed to be those the Cult of the Nine Silver Eyes were attempting to summon in Remnaz's youth, managed to use their power to incapacitate the entire population of the planet with horrific visions and hallucinations. Narina alone was able to not only resist the assault, but utilize her newfound training to bolster the student's mental defenses enough for him to regain control of his body and take his own life. Narina departed shortly after, not wishing to remain and explain how she had achieved these feats to the Order. As they still believed her not to be a psyker, the Order of the Coming Dawn were left to instead assume that Nerina's actions were a miracle of the God Emperor and that she could have only performed such an astounding feat if she was a living saint. Oh, oh God Emperor, give me strength. No. <laughs> her dismay over the news that she now has worshippers among the Adeptus Sororitas has thus far distracted her from this incident's implications or just how powerful a psyker she might be. Following the events of the highly classified Omega Vault incident, the two would encounter Mihal, a member of the Tau Empire's Earth cast. While the exact circumstances regarding their meeting remain classified, Mihal would go on to become an ally of the Ordo, resulting in Remlays and Mihal frequently trading information and intelligence with one another. Over time, the Order would begin to steadily grow in both size and influence, with a number of additional Inquisitors and their retinues being integrated into the ranks of the Theoreticus. As a small Ordo, even by Ordo Minoris standards, the Ordo Theoreticus lacks both the resources and authority to maintain a fully dedicated chamber militant. As such, officially the Order retains only their dedicated force of Tempestus Science, as all Inquisition Orders do. That said, there are several factions both inside and outside the Imperium that are willing to come to the Order's aid when needed, with reasons varying from begrudging debt to fanatical devotion and everything in between, and those are just the ones willing to publicly declare it. While this nebulous network of alliances lacks the certainty of swift retribution supplied by the Adeptus Sororitas on the Death Watch, the inability of potential enemies to properly gauge the consequences of crossing the Order Theoreticus more than makes up for this when intimidation is needed. 
Because of the order's small size, the majority of the organization can be located upon the personal ship of Lord Inquisitor Remleys, the Deinonychus. This vessel is a heavily modified Claymore-class corvette, serving as both personal dwelling and laboratory for the vast majority of the Ordo. Far smaller and less powerful than the ships normally quote-unquote acquired by Inquisitors as their personal vessels, the use of such a small unassuming vessel allows Remleys to avoid drawing excess attention during his investigations. Despite its modest size, its modifications make it far more dangerous than a standard Claymore would typically be. There are even unconfirmed reports of the ship utilizing restricted or banned technology, some of which may even be Xenus in nature, though these rumors are unconfirmed. For the majority of the Inquisition, the suppression of dangerous knowledge is of the utmost importance. However, for the Ordo Theoreticus, this is the antithesis of their mission. In order to protect the knowledge of the Imperium from its own enforcers, the Ordo Theoreticus seeks to undertake the seemingly daunting task of creating a backup of all Imperial records, particularly those that other elements within the Inquisition would likely seek to suppress. To this end, Lord Inquisitor Remles has dispatched agents to nearly every administratum facility and data vault in the galaxy to periodically send him files to add to the Order's archives. These agents disguise their transmissions as fictional fan-made stories referred to as homebrews among the remembrances of old to avoid inquisitorial suspicion, with Remley storing the original files in binary in an unknown location and Narina overseeing the maintenance of the project's audio archive. Over the span of several years, the Ordo has catalogued over 200 such files and will continue to do so for many years to come.